This week I've got The Kitchen, which is actually based on a DC comic, which I had no idea going into it until I saw the DC Vertigo kind of banner come up in the very beginning. And it stars Melissa McCarthy, Tiffany Haddish, and Elizabeth Moss, and it takes place in like the late 70s in Hell's Kitchen, and they all play wives of Irish mobsters, and the mobsters get bagged by the FBI, and so they decide to take over the kind of crime scene in New York at that point. And what I liked about this film is that there was an unrelenting lack of morality to any of these characters. It wasn't like, oh, I'm afraid to do this thing. Oh, I don't, I don't know if we should be committing these crimes. They're like, why are we, we could do this better. Why are we not doing this? Our husbands are idiots. Like, we're going to run this town. So I very much appreciated that. The performance wise, like Melissa McCarthy's accent drops in and out, which is very bizarre. Tiffany Haddish is in kind of a uh, quieted down role, which I I actually think Tiffany Haddish is a very good actress. It's just her range is not the most broad thing in the world, but I thought she did a good job in this. And then Elizabeth Moss is Elizabeth Moss. You know, I, I thought she did a good job, but her character was a little bit the most caricature of them all. And then you've got Donald Gleason, Margot Martindale, Common, and Bill Camp as kind of the supporting cast of like mobster centric fellow crime human beings. Overall, I was not expecting a ton out of this movie. Like, I remember seeing a trailer for it like a month ago, being like, what's that? Why has this not been on my radar? But I was kind of pleasantly surprised. I think it goes on a little bit too long. There are certainly some twists and turns and, like, a few too many of them. You know, any crime movie likes a good kind of double cross or triple cross or whatever. And I felt like this one was getting a little bogged down in trying to be like, this person's working with this person. Is this person really trustworthy? Who's in it for this? So... That aside, it, it's again, it's nice to see a female-led crime drama where they are criminals because they basically want to be criminals. Sure, circumstances have kind of pushed them into needing like the money and that being the main motivation, but that's that's the start of their motivation, and I like that it extends beyond that, and they aren't just these like meek women. So overall, I think this might actually be one of the better choices this weekend. It's opening against Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which I'm absolutely not seeing. Good luck if you want to see that. Uh, Dora and the Lost City of Gold, which I think is not appealing to the same demographic that the kitchen is trying to appeal to it's this is definitely an r-rated film you know an art of racing in the rain which is like a cute family dog movie to the best of my understanding so in terms of like hard hitting and i say hard hitting in quotes is not really hard hitting but in terms of like more adult summer fare that is not a superhero movie in spite of being based on a comic and not this huge blockbuster that's like number 20 in a franchise i thought the kitchen was actually like a relatively pleasant surprise so i'm gonna give it 3.4 out of 5. The other film I want to give a quick review on this week is called The Nightingale, and it's a very indie film. It's probably not going to be opening in a ton of theaters, but you'll probably see it like on demand or something like that soon. And this one, this one is a tough one to watch. And I know people keep saying that, but it's tough because it's very in your face with the violence and the there's a sexual assault and just like the brutal treatment of the main character. It's directed by Jennifer Kent, who did The Babadook, but there are no supernatural things in this. It's a different type of horror film, really. It's it's set in Australia in like the 1820s, and it follows this woman, um, Claire, played by Ashleen Francoise. She's like a, an Irish convict having been sent to the colonies, and uh, her kind of keeper is played by Sam Clayfin from Hunger Games, and he's just a total asshole. And she, or you're like, her uh, sentence is up. And yet he doesn't want to let her go. And so it's kind of like her escape from that. And then she's aided by an Aboriginal man. And it was interesting to see the juxtaposition of like, oh, violence against women versus like violence against indigenous people. And not to say that they're equal in any way, shape or form, but there was certainly a, you know, a, there's a comparison to be made between their two stories and like her, the prejudices she faced as an immigrant and a criminal in a land that was not her own at all. In that sense, it was very interesting. Again, it is tough to watch. It is unrelenting in its frankness with the uh the suffering of the main character and so just be warned going into that it's definitely probably gonna be like a trigger for a lot of people i think it's not gratuitous which is important so i salute it for that but it's it's definitely tough to watch i think um ashley does does a, a very good job it's a very tough role you know she carries the whole film it's really just mostly her It's a tough one to suggest somebody go see because of how painful it is to stomach. But if you are feeling thick skinned enough to go see this film, like I think it's worth seeing. I'm going to give this one a 3.4 out of 5 with the huge caveat or asterisk that it's not going to be palatable to a lot of people. And that's understandable. And not every movie is meant for everyone. And it is nice to support films that are not designed necessarily for a huge blockbuster audience.